My journey started when I was 13, the very first business uh, created, which was a boat and board system. So that was my first business. But as a grown up after university, I founded four tech companies over 15 years. And the last one is the one I exited successfully, which was a software as a service provider for car dealers. And so it doesn't matter how much success you had back where, wherever you're coming from. If you come to a new culture, it's as if you drove to a new address for the first time. Many people, what holds them back is simply beliefs, beliefs about what is possible for them. So for me, for example, I'm an immigrant from Hungary, grew up in Canada. And for a long time, I believed that because I was just a poor immigrant from Hungary, there's only so much success that I could have. That in Silicon Valley, as an immigrant, I could not get to levels of success that I would have dreamed. You see, for Americans, when they communicate, they are more direct. There's a spectrum of direct to indirect. Yes. They're more direct, but when it comes to negative feedback, the Americans are very indirect. Now, for French people, it's different. When they generally communicate, they're more indirect. But when they give feedback, they're more direct. So to give an example of what direct means, yeah. instead of saying, if I say, oh, this color is really ugly, this is direct. Yes. When I say, maybe another color could be better, that's indirect. Welcome to another super fantastic episode of Pitch Cafe podcast. Today we have with us somebody who will make you question your beliefs and stretch your wings. If something is holding you back, this gentleman knows exactly how to come out of the shadows and shine bright. With a lot of pride, warmth, I'd like to invite Peter Kovacs, my long-term friend. When I started my journey in coaching, he was one of the early mentors for me. So Peter, I'd love to extend a warm welcome to you on Pitch Cafe podcast. You are about to change lots of lives. This is a common question I get from a lot of my friends who are stuck in boring corporate jobs. How do I find meaning and purpose in my life? And as an executive coach, that's exactly what you're trying to do. And you're very successful at that. Recently, your client has invited you to Davos in Switzerland, one of the most premier events in the entire year anybody could attend. Obviously, you're very successful at what you do. Tell us about one story to open this podcast of how you're able to make a change with your approach to coaching with Essence. Yeah, so many of the, for many people, what holds them back is simply beliefs, beliefs about what is possible for them. So for me, for example, I'm an immigrant from Hungary, grew up in Canada. And for a long time, I believed that because I was just a poor immigrant from Hungary, there was only so much success that I could have. That in Silicon Valley, as an immigrant, I could not get to levels of success that I would have dreamed. Yeah. And so I learned that these beliefs are just beliefs, whether they're true or not, and they need to be challenged. So for me, I challenge this belief. And what that may help me do is try other things that I would not otherwise try. Because if there's something like, let's say, fundraising in the US, in Silicon Valley, or expanding to another country, if yeah. we don't believe that's possible, why would we try? But yeah. if we try, what is the worst thing that can happen? It's a lesson. Yeah. But what if you succeed? So this has been very helpful for me, but also the client that you mentioned, you know, he started off as an engineer at a tech company and working with him over many years, I helped him shape his leadership style, help him break past the limiting beliefs he had so that he could become a co-founder in a major AI, com AI company, AI startup that is making ways in the AI education space. And when I went to Davos, the World Economic Forum, they sponsored the building, they had a venue. I was invited to speak there several times and they've been reaching amazing levels of success and it's only growing. Wow. You took a client who was stuck in a boring job, 95 job, and you transformed him into a, a startup founder of a cool AI company. That's Is that right? That is correct. Yeah. So Peter, if I look at your resume, you uh, have very strong founder in, from very early in your career. You started some venture, some company, you've headed some business unit, but also you've had a strong streak of being a product leader. Now, if I put all those traits together, you, you're positioned very well to design a product in executive coaching and you're very comfortable working with founders because you yourself have been a founder and you exit a company. Is that correct? That is right. I, yeah. I, my journey started when I was 13, the very first business I uh, created, which was a built and board system. Back in the old days, for any of you who remember, yeah. you would yeah. dial up to my, from yeah. my, your computer to my server, yeah. one line, 
access to files and, and message boards. So that was my first business. But as a grown up after university, I founded four tech companies over 15 years. In wow. each of them, I was a product uh, manager. I was the product manager. And the last one is the one I exited successfully, which was a software as a service provider right. for car dealers. So you're uh, positioned very well to understand different levels in a company. Tell me, um, what is your coaching style like? How do you, let's say, I have a member of technical staff, a very technical person who doesn't speak a whole lot, who's kind of like an introvert, uh, and he wants to move to the next level. He wants to become a manager or a director in his company. He comes to you and say, hey, look, I'm really very smart at what I do. I'm a very brainy person, but I have trouble mm-hmm. interacting with people. Uh, I come from, let's say, given example, I come from India and I'm stuck here in uh, Silicon Valley. In my company, there are no, uh, in my group, there are no Indians at least. And I have these culture issues. So how do you help him? What is your um, playbook? So this is a hypothetical case. So if they come to you as a coaching client, what will you do? Yeah. So first of all, this is great. I'm an immigrant and most of my clients are people who either sound or look different than most people. So many of my clients are black women who are founders, leaders, C-suite around the world. And so my approach is to be a thinking partner. Mm -hmm. So most coaches focus on how you do things, which can be limiting. Sometimes you don't, you know what you're supposed to do, but you don't do it. Why is that? I focus on who are you being, which, which for me feels more valuable and deeper. Let's say in this case, you're talking to a person who is an introvert. How do you get to his being? It's a conversation. We begin with uh, a conversation that will lead to other conversations if it's a good fit. So mm-hmm. when, so I get my clients from referral from people I trust. When I get an introduction, I coach them for two hours. Mm-hmm. And here, it's about finding out if it's a good fit. I love to coach. So any coaching, any excuse is a good excuse. And during this conversation, I ascertain, you know, what's the challenge? What's, what's the presenting problem? What are they trying to create? Are they mm-hmm. coachable? Mm-hmm. Am, I, am I enjoying this conversation? Are they enjoying it? And then we go on this journey. I call this a quest. Mm-hmm. When you're on a path, mm-hmm. you go from point A to point B, and you know where these two points are. Yeah. That's more like project management. But if you go on a quest, is when you leave a point A with just a direction. In yeah. this case, maybe it's to be a better leader, to make yeah. a great life in the US. Yeah. But it's not set. It's not fixed. Yeah. So my what I do is I'm an ally on this journey. Now, the people that I work with are people who have aspirations, aims that are so big that they know that they need to undergo a level of personal transformation. And I'm an ally on that journey. So let's say this person who doesn't talk a whole lot is creating a lot of misunderstandings, which is, you know, a very typical case I go through, even with people who communicate well and mix well with people. All my friends who come to me for help with their career transformation have misunderstandings with people around them because of the way they are, whether they're introvert, extrovert, you know, there there are hundred kinds of people. But what do you do to improve the communication or the behavior of the person to their surroundings so that they start feeling positive and start making others feel positive? It depends on the situation. But mm-hmm. what we look at, especially when it comes to cross-cultural situations, and this is where cultural intelligence comes in, which is the ability to relate and work effectively with other cultures. So we, yeah. we look at where they're coming from. What is their current situation? What are the challenges? And also, yeah. how are they creating this situation? Yeah. It's very important to know how where you contribute, encourage, or, or allow a situation to happen. And based on where they're coming from and what are the challenges, sometimes it's a skill they're missing. They don't understand that. Maybe the way the others communicate is not as direct or indirect. And yeah. then it's working with them yeah. and doing whatever it takes to have them create the vision that they have, whether it's to get promoted or grow in a company or start their own business. Give me an example. You know, maybe you can pick another example. Can you give me where you started, how you work with the client? You don't have to name the client, but what they're doing right now. Uh, I know you talked about the founder, AI founder, uh, or a techie turned AI founder, but Is there any other example you have? There are many examples. Now, when it comes to this, what you mentioned, the communication example, I can can mention a a French person who came to the US and like, what was the difference? You see, for Americans, when they communicate, they are more direct. There's a spectrum of direct to indirect. Yes. They're more direct, but when it comes to negative feedback, the Americans are very indirect. They first start with the good, oh, this was awesome. And then, oh, this could be better. Now, for French people, it's different. 
when they generally communicate, they're more indirect. Mm -hmm. But when they give feedback, they're more direct. So to give an example of what direct means, yeah. instead of saying, if I say, oh, this color is really ugly, this is direct. Yes. When I say, maybe another color could be better, that's indirect. So what happened is that for a French person, the polite, proper way of giving feedback is to first start with what doesn't work yeah. directly so it's not misunderstood. And then if it's if everything else is really good, maybe mention it. But usually the way they feel about it is if it's already good, why waste time talking about it? But for an yeah. American, they start with the, the positive and then the negative. So this French person was in the U.S., and at the, at the performance performance review with their boss, what happened <laughs> is that their boss would start with the good. Yes. So the French person thought, oh, if they start with the good, there's no negative because they would have started with that otherwise. So they stopped mm -hmm. listening. But right. they, for the American manager, they started with the positive and then indirectly mentioned the negative. But yes. the French person was not receiving it because they stopped listening. And when it's indirect, they don't get that. And this so, cool the, yeah, so, so the manager was frustrated because after, you know, every quarter when the, the performance review, they give yeah. the feedback, but, the, but the, the French employee doesn't change their behavior. And after nine months, they, he, they was, he was fired. So yeah. the employee was wondering, like, wait, I get great reviews every single time. Why did I get fired? Yeah. But you see, this was simply miscommunication between two people from two very different cultures. Oh, my God. It's like almost like getting your language wrong. It's like you're saying something, but the other person is not understanding. There are so many levels of communication. Uh, you know, it's yeah. not just communicate, speak, but how you speak and what culture you speak from, right? Exactly. Language and culture. To use an Indian example, there's some uh, many Americans who went to India and yes. they realize, oh, they speak English too. They don't need a, a, a translator. While yeah. before, when they did business with China, they needed a translator because yeah. the English was not a language that many spoke. What yeah. they did not realize is that translator was translating the language and the culture. So yeah. when this American goes to America and they, sp and they speak to this, this person there, asking if the product will be ready in three weeks, yeah. the Indian person says yes. But what the Indian person means is yes, they understood, not that yes, it will be ready. <laughs> While for the American... They're like, oh, yes, it's going to be ready. <laughs> but in that culture, the, the the Indian person did not feel comfortable saying no. Yeah. And that's why they did not say that. So three weeks later, the American is expecting the product to be ready, and it's not. So you see, culture and, and language and all these things make an, an amazing, make the world amazing and so interesting, but also sometimes challenging. But that's why I love to work in this space. Yeah, Peter, I've been in the U.S. since uh, 2004, and um, until 2007, I was very, very careful and self-preservative. I never did anything out of the box. I just went to college, got my grades. I did my thesis, master's thesis. I was in a very difficult field, neuroscience. Uh, and I graduated as a neuroscientist. And then I opened my eyes in times of job search. And I'm like, I don't fit anywhere. Why don't I fit? I have this amazing degrees and I, I worked so hard and never spent money on anything. And then I uh, uh, just started hanging out with people I never hung out with. And I started spending more on myself in grooming myself. And my friends were like, she, she spends a lot. You know, she's got a hole in her pocket. She spends a lot. I'm like, uh, well, I need to do this because I never did this when I came to the US. And I spent a lot of effort on grooming myself, but my my friends who did not do that, they were left behind. Even today, they have not adapted. They come to me with the same problem. I'm new to the US. I'm from India. I'm not able to shed my old skin. What should I do? They've been here like more than 10 years. They still can't get it right. What is that grooming you need to do when you come to the US? What kind of grooming helps people? I mean, this is very yeah. specific to U.S. If I move, if I went to the Switzerland, I would be very different. I, I'm going to groom myself in a very different way. I work with people from Switzerland. But tell me what works in the U.S. What works in Silicon Valley? Hello, Mies. I'm Veera Patil. And I'm thrilled to introduce to you my latest project, 10 on 10, The Startup Playlist. Learning startup lessons and getting mentored by a Silicon Valley legend by way of rap songs. Have you ever wondered if startup lessons can be sung in the way of a startup rap song. Listen to one of my Gen Z founders, collaborators, singing my lap song. Two, one. I'm talking to Gable Lamb, e-book the device, converting printed text, 
in a precise 600 institution made them into a 100,000 life change our missions that was this young girl vision lost overnight her spirit shone bright igniting the light after a lapse we took flight with the vision to empower turning darkness to light here for me dear the news is got to build in tech and peace for our vision to grow handwritten to audio in 60 languages we flow making education and jobs for those who been through Check out the book 10 on 10, 10 startup lessons under 10 minutes each. Do you want to learn about startups under 10 minutes? Check out the book 10 on 10, 10 startup ideas under 10 minutes. Thank you. Check out the book 10 on 10 by Villa Patel and Dimit Jagdish. Yeah, it all depends where you're coming from. And so it's not about removing the old, cold, old skin, it's to have another skin that you can you can interchange so when you're with your indian friends you can revert back to however you you are approaching life but when you are in the us with most americans there's another approach but also there might be because the us is so multicultural sometimes you have people from other parts of the world yeah. so it's not about just having this approach of memorizing one way for one group of person but having the flexibility yes to adapt to different situations because even within the same group, let's say Americans, yeah. depending on the gender, on the part yeah. of the country, the generation, the differences. Yeah, so if, so if I go to an Indian wedding, I'm supposed to be adorned with jewels. But if I go to a Western wedding, I have to keep it very subtle, uh, minimalist and uh, stylish. You see the difference mm -hmm. in the way you dress? It starts yeah. there. It starts there. How do you come to office for an Indian Holy or Diwali function without being overdressed, but without being hunted. You know, it starts there. <laughs> so this is a very good example. So this is what's visible. If somebody goes to a wedding, all they see is how you dress, if they're close enough, how you sound. So this is like an iceberg. Yes. The, the tip that's visible, this is what you can see, but what's beneath it, the values, the beliefs, the customs, and the, how history has shaped things is not visible directly anyway. Yes. And so... When you come to a U.S. or any country, it's about being curious to understand where they're coming from. Yeah. Meet them in their comfort zone. Yeah. But in this case, first you have to know where you're coming from. Yeah. So one first step could be to learn about your own culture. Because yeah. first, by default, we do what we do because we've always done it that way, but we don't really understand where does it fit. It just feels yeah. so natural to us. Yeah. So there's yeah. one book series mm -hmm. called Culture Smart that's mm -hmm. very good at helping understand your own culture. So starting with where you're coming from, whether it's India or wherever, and second is the book on where you're going. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going from anywhere, let's say you're coming, you're going to go to, to, let's say, Delhi. Yeah. You have to know where you're coming from. Because if I'm in Dubai, yeah. I'm only four hours away. But if I'm in SFO, it's 12 hours. You have to know both points. Yeah. So this yeah. is one. But just some, some quick tips on how to learn. Because it's not about memorizing, but learning and figuring out the, getting the skill to be able to build relationships with anybody. So yeah. first thing is, this minimal education is good, but when you have an encounter with somebody and something is, is off, first suspend judgment and become curious. Huh, there's something that feels off. Why is that? Sometimes for somebody else's behavior that for you seems rude, the same behavior might be polite in their culture. See, two people, they want to be polite, but like the way yeah. it looks like, it could be different. So yeah. a quick example, how you eat. In the US, in Hungary, Eat with your mouth closed. Otherwise, they look at you like you're some dog and, and who, who, <laughs> where, who, who raised you. It's very negative. Yeah. Yeah. But in some parts of the world, what's polite is actually to make noise with your, with your mouth as you eat to show the chef your appreciation. You see? Oh, so sometimes yeah. somebody's yeah. behavior doesn't mean they're trying to be rude. So, so assume MRI, most respectful intent. So just this will be very helpful. Because anytime things is not the way you expect it, be curious. Huh? What's happening? Yeah. Now, as far as the first step to engage with somebody at work is communications. So understand, learn about how they communicate. So as I mentioned for the Americans, I when they provide feedback, yeah. it, it's more indirect. You know, one yeah. thing I ran into trouble was how you address somebody in an email. I used to use uh, dear sir when I came from India. And then I was mm -hmm. supposed to shed the sir because it was conferred to a knight in the UK and I don't, I shouldn't be carrying the culture. So I used to, so I'm supposed to address the CEO as Rob. Hi, Rob. I'm like, I would never do that because CEO is the, the most, the highest title in the company. A company has 6,000 employees. But they want me to say that. I said, okay, I'll say it. 
But I said that in a conversation. I said, I want to talk to Rob. And there was a very conservative VP of product marketing sitting there. He said, his name is Robert so-and-so. Don't address him as Rob. You don't have the stature to address him as Rob. I said, they asked me to change his name to Rob in the email. But when I use the word Rob in a conversation, you're considering me disrespectful. So um, this is uh, th- this is another email sensibilities, another sensibility. How you write emails. Oh. Is, <laughs> I went through a lot of feedback sessions for that. Yeah. So this is a good example to understand that there are some gray scale. Uh, sorry, gray shades of gray. So yeah. what happens is when it comes to behavior, yeah. you have three levels. You have what's universal. When somebody sees, you know, their loved one at the airport, when they're picking them up, they're, they're going to smile unless they hate their, 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 their loved one. So that, that's universal. There's some things that are cultural yeah. where somebody's behavior is the same as everybody else. So let's say if, if we meet, I give you kisses on the, on, on the cheeks. And if everybody in Hungary does that or most people, then that's a cultural thing. Yes. But maybe I have a, something, some, some quirk that is just me. That this doesn't represent a group. So sometimes when you're navigating, like in this case, yeah. most people would say, you can just say Rob, but then you have this one person who happens to be more conservative and who knows where he grew up. He does, did not uh, approve of that, yes. but that's just him. That's and maybe true. it's not just him. Maybe it's, it's some subgroup, but it's maybe half and half. Who knows? It's about figuring this out, but realizing that when you make these mistakes, it's not something to feel bad about. It's an opportunity to, to learn. So also that, that illustrates the example of what is polite. Somebody told you what's polite is to do just the, the rub. Then he said, no, you're supposed to be the first and last name. While in your culture, it was originally sir. But it's understanding that when you're using this other version, you're not being impolite because for them, that's what's polite. So when you become curious, you expand your repertoire of behaviors and you start realizing that, okay, so in the US it's like this, in India it's like that. And then as you're curious, you learn that, oh, the in the UK was like that. And then maybe you might see some, some patterns where former colonies of the UK eat some other way. So after a while, you may be able to even guess what's going on. But the simplest way to know is to ask. Yeah, you know, I like that. I always find people who ask questions and clarify things. I find that polite rather than doing something and then figuring out, oh, this was rude. So asking questions is great. Now, where this really matters is when you're raising funding. You come from wherever, India or Sri Lanka, wherever, and then you're raising funding here, you're sitting across the table with a VC who's just going to write a $2 million check. And then you have to appeal to his cultural senses or you have to come to a a country which you never lived before. You have to set up a customer success pipeline. You know, you have to set up like uh, a customer who pays you 50 grand for each product you roll out. So that's really where coaching is like rubber meets the road. What has your experience been with founders who come from other places and they're trying to get funding or they're trying to win customers. What stories do you have to say, you know, share with us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are some of the most exciting stories because then when there's success, when millions are raised and the company succeeds and the impact they can have for their lives and family back home, yeah. but also with the customers. And yeah. so in both cases, it's about adapting. When you come, you have to understand, okay, how do you build trust with the people there? How do they communicate? What is, you know, again, what is the proper Way. So culture is simply just some rules about what is proper and desirable. So acceptable and desirable for a group. Founder who's not lived in Silicon Valley, if they come and pitch to a VC, they come with 35 minute presentations. But a typical Silicon Valley VC has five to seven minutes. Exactly. But again, to get to that point is for them to understand where they're coming from. And, and so most people, they have some way of doing anything that's the way. By default, most humans think that their way is the best way and they're just waiting for others to realize that they should start doing things like, like, like they do it. And so in this case, it's important to have that curiosity. When you come, again, be curious. Mm-hmm. So when you come to a new place, yeah. don't assume that, that, that you know what's going on, even if you've been very successful back home. Many, many leaders fail because of that. They've been successful in a certain country. I'll yes. give you a quick example. An American leader. What does an American like, great leader behavior looks like? self-deprecating humor, call me Rob, call me by my first name, approachable. But the same behavior in, let's say, Morocco is not going to fly because for them, the way leadership leaders are supposed to behave is somebody who knows the answers and they're very directing. So for them, somebody who allows others to call themselves, call them by the first name, who are they? If they don't, res- don't respect themselves, why should I respect them? Yeah. You see, so that can be a big change. 
And so it doesn't matter how much success you had back where, where were you coming from. If you come to a new culture, it's as if you drove to a new address for the first time. You have to <laughs> slow down, maybe turn down the volume on the radio, get the GPS out or the map. Same thing. Yeah. So you come, you want to build trust. Look around. Now there's, you know, the Google, there's chat GTP you can ask, or, or people like me who, who help leaders be successful as they cross cultures. So it's like, yeah. what, what needs to be adjusted? Maybe yeah. the way they speak is already great. You know, they're great at uh, oratory skills. But then, okay, they have 35 minutes. What's the norm? Quick yeah. Google search. They can see it's shorter. Okay, be curious. Why? What to change? They can find slide decks and, and all other different elements very easily. And then I look at what is their, what's the gap between where they are yeah. and where they need to be. In many cultures, including yeah. many European countries, public speaking is not something that in university is taught. So yeah. by default... Yeah. You know, some of those uh, some of those leaders are really bad at public speaking. And so then I work on that. Basically, again, whatever it takes, whether it's presentation skills, whether it's like the, the accept confidence, the mindset for them to believe that they can be successful here. Yeah. Because if you don't believe, then why you want it? Why would you try? Why would you really put in the effort? Amazing. You seem to have a very strong focus on uh, culture as in the the native culture of the person there's also a company culture which is not uh, anything related to upbringing or religion it's more how things are done in google versus meta versus cisco versus nvidia how do you help people with that kind of culture let's say something is done in google in a certain way the employee feedback reviews are done very elaborately but maybe in another company it's just done so quickly and uh, people move on very quickly. So how do you work with that? Because you don't really work in those companies. How do you um, get into those issues uh, as a coach? A company like Google might be the size of a, a tiny country. So mm -hmm. there's some smaller, you know, those little uh, principalities that maybe the same lower population. But yeah. it doesn't really matter. Treat it as a small country. And even inside those organizations, you have different teams. The engineering team, the sales team, they might have a different culture. Yeah. And so what I do with my clients is I do that deep work of helping them learn how to fish in a way. So then they can fish wherever they go, even in an area where there's a kind of fish I've never encountered. I give them those, those deep skills to be able to navigate the world successfully, even without me, once I have coached them to develop the, those skills so that when they go to a new company, they can figure it out. But also cultures change. So yeah. when, the, when the when the culture changes in a company, say there's a new CEO or they get they get bought or there's a merger, there's a merger. whatever the case is. Exactly, yeah. all these horror stories come out when these large companies acquire smaller companies, and there's a merger. First of all, layoffs, or first of all, uh, the people move to a different city or town. There's so much uh, back and forth happening. Some people uh, are like uh, really lost. How do you deal with that? Like culture, fusion of cultures. Yeah. So it, it comes back the same way as when, think back to the first time you moved to this country. There were some yeah. challenges. Yes. But had you been working with somebody like me, it would have been much easier. So because yeah. you have known what to look for, what yeah. to expect, what to look for, what to, what behavior to change and how yeah. to be successful, depending on what your goal is, maybe to, to make new friends. Even how, how you make friends change depends on one culture to the other. Yeah. And so... Again, the client would bring me what the challenge is because yeah. every merger is a different scenario and what, what is their goal. And I would be an ally on the journey to help them navigate these situations where whether it's some training around cultural intelligence, maybe it's deeper work on mindset on some of their limiting beliefs or yeah. maybe strategic thinking or leadership skills. Yeah. Again, whatever it takes to have them be successful in going from where they are now to where they want to go. So on that note, you have a masterclass coming up uh, what what aspects of coaching does it uh, focus on and who can register and what to expect from your masterclass? So this masterclass is called Create from Essence. The idea of essence is one of the core principles of my coaching that I learned from my mentor, Robert Ellis. And the idea is that we all have a natural way of being in the world that adds value and is effortless. You know, some things that we're good at and we don't realize, we take it for granted. Now, if we find a way of being, a way of leading, or a kind of business we want to start that is congruent with our essence, which yeah. means it's harmonious with our essence, that's when things become effortless. You're in the yeah. zone like yeah. very easily and you can create a lot of value while not really feeling that it's a lot of effort. So yeah. this, this self-guided masterclass 
is for leaders who are you know, seasoned executives or founders who want to get to the next level. So yeah. either raise their game in a company as a leader, get to the C-suite perhaps, or start their own company. But also for post-exit founders who have had big successes, but they feel something is still missing. Often it's purpose, meaning as they create what's next while having impact. So here, it's going to be an opportunity to, to work with me. There are going to be some material that can learn on their own, self-paced, but also access to me. There's a community where we can support each other and also office hours where there's live access to me. So anybody who wants to raise the game for the leadership, for the career, for the company, or maybe make the switch to become an entrepreneur, this is for them. So we definitely look forward to that. So it's called Coaching with Essence. Guys, check it out. Create from Essence. Oh, Create from Essence. Okay. Uh, co- coaching with, from Essence was Robert Ellis. So it's Create from Essence. That's amazing. Okay. So guys, please check out Create from Essence by Peter Kovacs. I think it'll be out in like uh, a month or so, or is it two months? No, by the time this is done, it's going to be out. <laughs> okay, wonderful. All right. Yeah. And also, so this is one way to engage with me. Another one is if you're ready, if whatever I said here appeals to you, and if you're serious about getting some coaching, then reach out to me and we can have a conversation. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Reach out to Peter. I've worked with him. I've had a great experience and uh, many people have worked with him. And uh, yeah, you've recently been to Davos. That speaks a lot about how how good you are at what you do. Thank you so much, Peter. It was uh, a great, uh, amazing half hour. I learned so much. And hope to have you back on Pitch Cafe. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. It's been a privilege. Hello, Mies. I'm Veera Patil. And I'm thrilled to introduce to you my latest project, 10 on 10, the startup playlist. Learning startup lessons and getting mentored by a Silicon Valley legend by way of rap songs. Have you ever wondered if startup lessons can be sung in the way of a startup rap song? Listen to one of my Gen Z founders, collaborators, singing my lap song. Two, one. I talk and give lamp. He was the device converting printed text, making them precise. 600 institutions made them inclusive. 100,000 lives changed our mission status. This young girl, vision lost overnight. Her spirit shone bright, igniting the light. After a lapse, we took flight. With the vision to empower, turning darkness to sight. Here yeah. for me, we are the new cigar to home. Building tech that speaks what our vision will grow. Handwritten to audio, in 60 languages we flow. Making education and jobs for those who've been through. Just to get him a study night in the place. Empowering the world in so many ways. Akshita and Moni, remember the names. And press a lot to get changing the game. I met this young girl, vision taking overnight. What a spirit shone bright, igniting the light. At Trestle Labs, we took flight. With the dream to empower, turn darkness to sight. A talking table lamp, keyboards that device. Converting print of words, making them precise. 600 institutions, we made them inclusive. 100,000 lives change, our mission's conclusive. So here's to the dreamers, turning nights into days. Empowering the world in so many ways. AK and Bunny, remember the names. I try so last, we're changing the game. AK and Bunny, they're the names you gotta know. Building tech that speaks, watch our vision grow. From handwritten to audio in 60 languages, we Flow, making education and jobs for those who've been low. Yo, yo, I met this young girl, vision taken overnight. But a spirit shone bright, igniting the light. And trust the left, we took fight. With the dream to empower, turn darkness to sight. A talking table lamp, keyboards the device. Converting printed words, making it precise. 600 institutions, we made them inclusive. 100,000 lives change, our mission's conclusive. So here's to the dreamers, turning nights into days. Empowering the world in so many ways. AK and Bunny, remember the names. At Trestle Labs, we're changing the game. AK and Bonnie, they're the names you gotta know Building tech that speaks, watch our vision grow From handwritten to audio in 60 languages we flow Making education and jobs for those who've been low Check out the book 10 on 10 10 startup lessons under 10 minutes each Do you want to learn about startups under 10 minutes? Check out the book 10 on 10 10 startup ideas under 10 minutes 
Check out the book Tell Out Tell by Dilla Patel and Deepak Deesh.